I'm into that. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are here, and we welcome all the visitors that are here. It's so nice to have a nice, wonderful crowd, and we just, we just love you all, so we thank you for coming. My name is Donna Boardman. I'm the lay leader of our congregation, and this is Pastor Paul Copeland, who will be leading our worship today. Well, I have a few announcements that I'm going to lift up, so please bear with me if you will. Our all-church birthday party will be held next Sunday, May 21st, and that's going to be happening during fellowship time downstairs. And they're asking you to, this is something new, so it's kind of cool, to sit at your birthday month's designated table. And a bowl will be on each table for you to give an offering for the blessing of years that, year, of years that God has given you, so the number of years that God's given you. And we are asking that your offering be given in pennies. Gee, would that be pennies from heaven? <laughs> you betcha. God is good. All the time. All the, time. the Mission Outreach Ministry team would like to thank everyone for bringing gifts for the baby shower for the Pregnancy Resource Center. They are also asking for donations of various card games and board games for the Kiwani Life Skills Reentry Center. And it's also formerly known as Illinois Youth Center. And collection tubs will be available until May 31st. So check around at your house and see if you have anything you could donate. Kiwani School District 229, along with the federal lunch and breakfast program, and this is so important for the children, will provide free breakfast and lunch for any child under the age of 18. How awesome is that? They will also pr provide um, anyone age 21 if mentally or physically challenged. And this will be between May 22nd and July 28th while the children are on summer vacation. A schedule with locations and times is posted on the bulletin board in the church office hallway. And the worship committee is looking for special music. So if you are gifted or talented in special music, they're looking for people to sign up to do our worship services from June 4th through September 3rd. And so you can uh, talk to the church office regarding that, and we'll get you signed up. And Church World Service has issued a certificate of appreciation to the First United Methodist Church, that would be us, of Kiwani, in recognizing our congregation as a national cream of the crop, top fundraising team with the 2016 Kiwani Area Crop Hunger Walk, raising $6,166 to end hunger and poverty around the world. And this certificate is displayed on the church office hallway wall. So take a look at that. Let's give congratulations to God for giving us the ability to be able to give. <laughs> for without God, we would be nothing. I think that's all I have to lift up today. Does anyone else have any announcements? All right, are you ready to worship? All right. Praise God. Have a good day, and God bless you all. Good morning, good morning. and happy Mother's Day. I want to clarify the uh, birthday offering next year. Next week, you're asked to bring your offering in pennies, and the goal there is for you to bring at least as many pennies as you are old. So you should, if you're, I'm 63, so I should be bringing at least 63 pennies to represent every year of my life, and so you're encouraged to at least do that. And uh, so that's a clarification of, of that for that uh, opportunity next week as we celebrate our birthdays. We want to congratulate Carter Salisbury this morning. He was a medalist in the high jump event at the state track meet yesterday. Congratulations, Carter. How high did you jump? Five two, five foot two. Anybody here five foot two? We could maybe get a demonstration of Carter jumping over you. Seems like there was something else I was supposed to say, but I've forgotten what it was. So would you please take a few moments to greet those around you today?
As the choir sings the introit this morning, let us turn our hearts and our spirits unto God. Come to Christ, the living cornerstone. Come to rest on the foundation of God's love. Come to be strengthened and renewed in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn celebration this morning is number 445, Happy the Home When God is There. Please stand as you are able and join in singing. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we praise your holy name. You are our rock, you are our refuge, you are our strength and our help in every time of need. You are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who gave his life on the cross of Calvary for our sake. Yet you did not forsake him to death, but you raised him up in resurrection power. And so you have also raised us up in resurrection power from sin to life, from death to life. Again, we would ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us to renew and refresh us in this time of worship. 
May it be so that when we leave this place, we will know that it has indeed been good to have been gathered together as your people, gathered in your house, gathered in your love. All of these things we ask in the name of the one, the Christ, the Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. for the praise the name of Jesus and this is the noisy offering for the pregnancy resource center praise the name of Jesus praise the name of Jesus he's my rock he's my fortress I was thinking we probably should be singing this three times through instead of just twice while we get the noisy offering collected. Thanks, kids, for all your help today. This is the day in which we celebrate May birthdays and wedding anniversaries. So if you have a May birthday, would you please stand? Everybody who has a May birthday, please stand. Or if you're unable to stand, just wave your hand. Lots of May birthdays. Lots of May birthdays. Let's sing to them, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. We wish you very many, many more happy birthdays and a happy birthday this month. If you have a May wedding anniversary, would you please stand? Or if you're unable to stand, raise your arm. We got a few May wedding anniversaries. Good. Let's sing to them. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And we wish you many, many more happy wedding anniversaries. And I want to remind you that next Sunday, we're having a church-wide birthday party. We're going to celebrate everybody's birthday, no matter when it occurs in the year. And uh, so uh, during the fellowship gathering, you're all invited downstairs for the fellowship time to celebrate everybody's birthday throughout the whole year. Let us be in prayer.
Eternal and everlasting God, once again we bow before you with praise, with thanksgiving and adoration, knowing that you are Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that you are Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, that you are the one that we know to be transcendent, far above us. Your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. But you're also the one who in Jesus Christ has drawn near to us to become flesh, to walk among us as a human being. And you are spirit who is with us always wherever we go, empowering us and enabling us to live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. We simply praise your name. And say thank you. We lift up before you, God, the people that are on our printed prayer list. We lift up before you the people that we name only before you in our own hearts. We ask that you would draw near to those who are suffering in any way, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, going through a difficult financial time in their life having difficulty within their relationships, people who are lonely, people who feel as though they are unloved and unlovable, people who are hopeless and helpless. Draw near to them, O God, and lift up their spirits. Heal their broken lives. Restore them to the newness of life in Jesus Christ. May they know the depths of your love. May they know the sacrifice that Jesus made for them. And in the knowledge of his sacrifice, may they come to a place of faith. May they come to a place of trust. And receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And know the power of his resurrection. We pray for those who are hungry, for those who are homeless, for those who are thirsty, for those who are sick, for those who are imprisoned. Undergird and sustain their lives in your presence. We pray again for our troubled world. We pray for peace. We pray for justice. We pray, God, for good relationships among all peoples. We pray for the leaders of our state and of our nation and of our world and local leaders as well. Give them of your wisdom. Give them of your guidance. Give them of your direction. And we pray for ourselves as we seek to follow Jesus. God, we know we often stray. God, we know that we often look away and look at the storms in our lives rather than focus our attention on Jesus. Again, we ask for your forgiveness and your mercy. And help us to hear afresh. Jesus say unto us, come, follow Jesus me. Renew our faith, renew our hope, refresh our lives in the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus, even as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
As we prepare to give of our offerings and to give of ourselves, hear these words from Proverbs. He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will, re- and he will reward him for what he has done. Eternal God, some of these gifts will be used to share the love of Jesus Christ within our congregation. Some of these gifts will be used to share your love within our community. Some will be used to share your love within our state and within our nation. 
And some of these gifts will be used to share your love throughout our world. Wherever you choose to use these, our gifts, O God, we also ask that you would choose to use us in whatever avenue you might lead. Bless these gifts. Bless the givers. May we be a blessing to others. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's Mother's Day, and we want to recognize the mothers. We're going to start with the, um, if any of you are great, great, great grandmothers, would you please stand? I just want to make sure I cover all the bases here. Uh, If you are a great, great grandmother, would you please stand? Or if you're unable to stand, raise your hand. Nobody's got any great, great grandchildren? One. Oh, Phyllis, up there in the balcony. Okay. No, no, keep standing. Don't, don't sit down yet. How about great, great, no, we did just, we just did that, didn't we? Uh, great grandmothers. Would all the great grandmothers stand up and please remain standing because... You see... See, if you're a great-grandmother, that covers the rest of the bases that we're going to cover here in just a minute. So, if you are a grandmother, would you please stand? Grandmothers. If you are a mother, would you please stand? And if you are a daughter, would you please stand? We recognize that all of you may not be uh, mothers, uh, but you have spent a lot of years mothering people and sharing and giving of your time, and we appreciate that as well. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these women who have given themselves in so many different ways throughout the years, not only to their families, but also to their friends, also to children within the church and children within our community and beyond. Thank you for their love, for their care, for their concern, for their compassion, just for the many ways in which they have shared your love with others. God, we pray for them as they continue the task of sharing motherly love and sisterly love, and womanly love. As they continue to give of themselves, continue to strengthen, sustain, and undergird their lives. God, this day we pray for broken homes. May your love bring restoration. May your love bring a renewed spirit of fellowship and family life within those circumstances and difficult situations. And may mothers and women everywhere know the depths of your motherly love and care for each one of us. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. We do appreciate all the ways in which you give of yourselves. And uh, as you leave worship this morning, uh, please make sure you pick up your gift. We have a little bookmark for you. So make sure you get that as you leave the sanctuary this morning. Every week the choir comes up and sings... Every week, the choir comes up and sings a hymn. And we are privy to information about that song, but you aren't. And this particular song that we're going to sing today, Be Still and Know, was written by a gentleman named Stephen Curtis Chapman. 
And what he wrote about this song, we felt we wanted to share it with you. And when we have another interesting description of a song by the composer, we're going to share that with you as well. This is what he writes about Be Still and Know. I wrote this song while on a 17-hour flight with my family to South Africa. The trip was a profound experience which greatly impacted my songwriting. On the flight over, I began to feel disappointed because I thought that once I left for South Africa, I would be at rest and feel God's presence. Instead, I found myself just as restless as I was in Franklin, Tennessee. God began to speak to my heart saying, what you need is to still your heart, turn the noise off, and know that I am God. When you're still, you quickly realize how ungodlike you are and how much you need him. Thank you for letting us share.
morning. The epistle lesson this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please turn to Jesus Loves Me as the children go to junior church. Yeah. 
When the bulletin was printed, I thought I was going to be referring to both the Second Peter or the First Peter passage and the John passage. As the sermon has developed over the last uh, several hours, I decided that I'm going to preach from the John passage next Sunday. So put that John gospel lesson in your pocket and be thinking about it over the next week or so, and I'll be preaching on uh, John 14 next Sunday. Most of us who have had teenagers have probably at one time in our lives or another looked at them and said, Would you please grow up? Grow up, for goodness sake. Some of us know um, people in their 20s and 30s and 40s who haven't yet grown up. And... uh, It takes some people a little bit longer to grow up than it takes other people to grow up. And sometimes when at 63 you do something really, at my house we're not, we're not allowed to use the word S-T-U-P-I-D, but there are times as a 63 year old that I do those kinds of things and then I feel like I'm a 15 year old again and I keep saying to myself, Paul you really ought to be growing up by now. You ought to grow up. Well, here in 1 Peter, we are encouraged to grow up. It may, that you may grow up in your salvation. The author is writing to Christians who are having a difficult time. They're enduring some persecution. They're enduring some suffering in their life. And yet the apostle tells them that they need to grow up in their salvation. That they're in terms of their spiritual development, they're still acting like children, like newborn babies who crave pure spiritual milk. In another place in uh, Paul's writing, he talks about Christians who just want to enjoy milk and they need to be moving on to something a little bit more substantial in their life. But here, the apostle uh, Peter. Uh, says to us that we are to crave the pure spiritual milk. We're to crave God's spiritual nurture. And so that we can grow up, so that we can mature in our salvation, so that we can mature in our faith, so that we can mature in our walk with Jesus Christ. Now, as I read this passage earlier in the week, I was a little taken aback by the fact that it starts with the second verse. And I thought, well, I wonder why it starts with the second verse. So I read the first verse. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. And I thought, well, I don't know why they didn't include that in the first place, because that is one way in which we grow up in our salvation. One of the ways in which we grow up in our salvation is to get rid of the junk in our lives. Get rid of malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander of every kind. If you expect to grow up in your faith, if you expect to mature in your faith, there's probably some things going on inside your life that you need to get rid of. Now, I'll be honest with you. There are times when I look at my life and I'm thinking to myself, well, Paul, you're not much different of a person than you were when you were a teenager or in your early 20s. Some of the same mistakes I was making back then, I still make every now and then. And as I said earlier, there's times when I do things that aren't really, uh, that are not very smart, and it kind of makes me feel like I've uh, uh, regressed all of those years. But here we're called to grow up, in our salvation to mature and one of the ways in which we do that is to get rid of the junk in our lives these bad qualities remember that paul said that the fruit of the spirit is love faith joy peace patience kindness gentleness there's nine of them all together and so when we look at these negative traits here listed in second in first peter chapter 2 we can compare them with the positive traits that Paul lists in Galatians. Last Sunday in my Sunday school class that I teach, we looked at a couple of passages from Philippians 
and from Colossians that says to us, set your minds on the things that are above. If there is anything worthy of praise, if there is anything worthy to be thinking about, think about these things. Think about spiritual matters. Think about godly matters. Don't allow yourself to be thinking about things that are simply negative in your life. And he says that we're to mature in our salvation because we have tasted that the Lord is good. God is good, and all the time, because we've tasted that goodness of God, we're called to mature in our faith. Verse 4 of this passage says, As you come to Him, the living stone, as you come to Him. If we look at that a little bit differently, it becomes not just a matter of fact as we come to Him, but it also becomes an invitation. Come to Jesus. If you want to be mature in your faith, come to Jesus. If you want to be a mature person, come to Jesus. If you want to get rid of the junk in your life, come to Jesus. Because you are like living stones. You are being built into a spiritual house. You are being built into a spiritual house. Now that is a promise. Again, God's doing the work. God is building you into a spiritual house. And yet we're not just a bunch of dead lumber waiting to be used by the carpenter. We are living people who can either be pliable to be used by that person building us or we can be a little bit stubborn and we can be a little bit refusing to allow God to do God's work in our lives. But think about what it takes to build a house. To build a house, you have to have a strong foundation. Is the foundation of your spiritual house strong? Or are there some weak places in the foundation of your spiritual house? Remember Jesus said, called us to be like the wise man who when he went to build a house, he, built the, he made, laid a firm foundation of stone and when the winds came, the house stood firm. And he contrasted that with the foolish person who simply takes of this place of sand and tries to build a house on a sandy spot where the waters come and soon, and soon that sandy foundation is washed away and the house crumbles. In your spiritual walk with God, are you being a wise person or are you being a foolish person in how you're building the foundation of your life and how you're allowing Jesus to build the foundation of your life? Here in Peter, we're called a living stone as we come to the living stone, Jesus Christ. But it also says that we are a holy priesthood. That is a great, wonderful promise. And he repeats that a little bit later on. You are a royal priesthood. That is a wonderful promise. A priest is a person who is chosen. A priest is a person person of honor. A priest is a person who stands before God. And you have the privilege, all of us have the privilege of standing before God as priests. But being a priest also brings it some responsibility. Priests are people who, who not just stand between us and God, but priests are people who become conduits. Ways in which people can connect with God. So we have the, both the privilege of standing as a priest before God, and we also have the responsibility of trying to help bring other people to God as a priest. As Jesus Christ, our high priest, brought us to God. He says that we are, to call, we are called to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And whatever spiritual sacrifice we offer is seen in the light of the sacrifice that God, Jesus Christ rather, made on the cross of Calvary. We cannot bring any sacrifice 
in order to add to the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has given. We cannot bring any sacrifice that add to it or to embellish it, but we bring our own sacrifices as we give of ourselves under the service of God and in the service of God's kingdom. And then we go down to verse 9, this wonderful promise again that brings both with it a privilege and a responsibility. You are a chosen people. God has chosen you. God has chosen me. Not because of anything we've done, not because we're good people, but simply out of God's mercy, we have been chosen. Again, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. As I read a little bit earlier in the week about this particular text, the author reminded me that the word holy, we think of the word holy as something that is just grand and awesome and it's just way up here and a little bit beyond us. But the term holy originally simply meant that you were separated for a particular purpose or a particular use. I bet some of you have fine china. And the only times that you bring out your fine china is at Thanksgiving or Christmas or maybe today on Mother's Day or Father's Day. You use that fine china for special occasions. I imagine some of you have a very fine silver dinnerware set that's kept in a box someplace, and you only bring it out when you use the fine china. The fine china and that fine silverware dinner set is holy because they're set aside, they're separate from your everyday utensils and the everyday plates that you use. So in the original context of that word holy, That dinnerware and that china is holy because it's separate from the ordinary. You and I are separated from the ordinary in life. And that separateness not only is, again, a privilege, but a responsibility. We're a holy people. We are a people who belong to God. And again, it is God who took the initiative to make sure that we belong to God. It is God who says, you are my people. Once you were no people, but now you are my people. Once you had no mercy, but now you have mercy. And why is that? Here comes that responsibility part again. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We are a holy priesthood, a holy nation. We are the people of God, chosen by God, so that we might declare to others the greatness of God's love in Christ Jesus. For again, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. A great story is a preacher's great love. Robert Long shared a story out of his own life, and it's a fairly lengthy account, but I'm going to go ahead and read it, even though it's kind of lengthy, because it is a wonderful story. And he goes on, he, so hang in there with me as I read this. Once, I, one day I was driving home to Houston on some back roads through little towns in East Texas when I was pulled over by a police officer. By the way, in the state of Texas, they don't allow you five miles an hour over the speed limit. If you're going five miles an hour over the speed limit, they will pull you over. They have a plane in the sky that sees that you're doing that, and they tell the car down below. And the reason I know that, well, you figure that one out. (laughs) My, uh, My son, who is with me, 
One of our adopted sons told the police officer that we had been down in Texas so he could meet his birth father because he was adopted. And the state patrolman said, well, I'm adopted too. So you go on your way. That's grace and mercy. So he's telling me that he's pulled over by a police officer. He's going through these back roads in Texas. When I rolled down my window, he said, your inspection sticker has expired. Sure enough, my inspection sticker had expired three days before. I wasn't worried. I figured he would give me a warning ticket and tell me to get it fixed. But instead, he gave me a ticket for $68. A $68 ticket for a $5 inspection sticker that was expired by three days? It was true I had done wrong, but I didn't think the crime was that extreme. I took the ticket home, tossed it on my desk, and thought I would take care of it soon, but I forgot. One month later, I received a certified letter saying, You failed to pay your fine and did not show up for your court date. The fine is now $350. If you do not show up in the next seven days, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. $350 for a $5 inspection sticker. A warrant for my arrest for an inspection sticker that was three days overdue. I immediately called and got a court date. When I arrived at court, I found that the building was set out in the middle of a cornfield, and it wasn't a courthouse at all, but rather a dance hall. There were folding chairs sitting on a concrete floor. Behind a high bench sat a judge who wielded complete control with the law. I watched as the people approached the bench. They would confess their sins, and then the judge would slam down the gavel and pronounce their sentence. Justice was dispensed quickly and completely. There was no question I had made a mistake, and now I was getting worried about what the judge might say about my failure to pay my ticket. Suddenly, the court clerk called my name. When I went over to the desk, she said, We've lost your paperwork. I brought you the letter you mailed to me, I said. I know, she said. You did everything right, but we've lost your paperwork. Well, what does that mean, I asked. She said, it's like nothing ever happened. Your crime is forgotten. You're free to go. Good night and goodbye. Long goes on to say, I ran for the door, jumped in my car, and took off in a cloud of dust before they could change their mind. In Peter, we were, are reminded that once we knew, mer, knew no mercy, now we have been shown mercy. Because God's lost the paperwork that kept track of your sin and my sin. And the paperwork that God now has is simply a blank sheet of paper because Jesus paid the price. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for mercy. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for Jesus, the living stone, to whom we can come in order to become living stones ourselves. We praise you, God. We are awestruck by the fact that you call us a chosen people. We are all struck that you call us a holy nation and a holy priesthood. That you have chosen to use us to share the love of Jesus Christ throughout all of our world. God, in your mercy, in your forgiveness, in the fact that the piece of paper is blank because Jesus paid the price, Help us to give up the junk in our lives and help us to grow up to become mature Christians, mature followers of Jesus Christ. And may it be, God, that we will love you more today than yesterday. 
and will love you more tomorrow than today. To your glory and to your honor we pray. Amen. Our hymn of sending is number 695, O Lord, May Church and Home Combine. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. Ladies, again, we want to wish you a very happy and blessed Mother's Day. May God continue to bless each of you richly. And I want to remind you that as you leave the sanctuary, please pick up your bookmark as you go. May you go out this day to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. May you go out to serve the purposes of God's kingdom. And the knowledge that God's love, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with you this day and every day. Amen. Thank you.